Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show from People's Dispatch. This is a show where we bring you stories of resistance, yes, but also a pushback against narratives which seek to malign people's movements and seek to constantly sabotage those who fight for a better world. First, we go to India, where massive protests took place following the murder attempt of the Unnao rape survivor. Political parties, civil society groups and movements demonstrated in New Delhi and Uttar Pradesh, demanding justice for the survivor and against the lack of action by the ruling far-right Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP. BJP has been accused of extending patronage to the key accused in the rape case, Kuldeep Singh Sengar who is a member of Legislative Assembly from the Unnao constituency and a member of the BJP. The Unnao rape case refers to the rape of a 17-year-old girl on June 4, 2017, in which Kuldeep Singh Sengar, his brother and a few others close to them have been accused. However, after the rape survivor filed a complaint with the police, a series of incidents have taken place which have made it clear that she, along with her family, are being targeted for demanding justice against a member of India's powerful ruling party. In April last year, the survivor's father was brutally thrashed by Kuldeep Singh's brother. Later, the police arrested the victim's father and sent him to jail where he died in judicial custody. Following this, the victim tried to self emulate herself in front of Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Aditya Nath's house, accusing him of shielding the victims. The case was later handed over to Central Bureau of Investigation, which charged Kuldeep Sengar of raping a minor. Sengar was arrested on April 13, 2018. Other family members of the rape survivor were also targeted, such as her uncle, who has been implicated in a 19-year-old attempt to murder case filed by the brother of the accused MLA Kuldeep Singh. Now, on July 28, a truck crashed into the car in which the rape survivor was travelling along with her lawyer and two aunts. The two aunts died, one of whom was a key witness and the victim and her lawyer are in an extremely critical condition. In Lucknow, the opposition Congress, Bahujan Samaj Party and Samajwadi Party held protests alleging a conspiracy behind the accident. After the public outrage on Monday, Bharatiya Janata Party lawmaker Sengar, considered close to Chief Minister Aditya Nath and already in jail, was booked for murder along with nine others. Multiple protests were also held in Delhi by women and other rights groups. Now we go to Turkey. A large number of Syrian refugees are being deported back to their home country, to the war-torn Idlib province, in a special drive being undertaken by Turkish officials since last week. Consequently, dozens of women gathered in Istanbul on July 27 to protest the arrests and reported deportations of thousands of refugees who the Turkish government says are unregistered. At the protest titled Women in Solidarity with Refugees, organized by the Istanbul Women's Assembly of the People's Democratic Party, or HPD, Women held signs and wore black dresses in solidarity with the refugees. According to reports, around 1,000 unregistered Syrian refugees have been deported until now. As per the 1951 Geneva Convention, of which Turkey is a signatory, no government can deport refugees without their consent. There are close to a million Syrian refugees in Istanbul, but only 500,000 of them are officially allowed in the city. The rest are either registered outside the city or not registered anywhere in the country. The Turkish government considers both the latter categories as illegal and wants to deport them to their places of registration or back to Syria. Most of these refugees survive by doing petty jobs inside the city and live in abject poverty. Turkish officials have also arrested thousands of other Syrians living in Istanbul to be sent to the places inside Turkey where they are registered. The move has created fear among the Syrians living in Istanbul. There are also allegations of use of force and intimidation by the authorities to make Syrians sign a document which says they have agreed to move out of Turkey voluntarily. The Interior Minister of Turkey, Suleiman Soyulu, tried to placate the refugees' fear by announcing on July 28 that non-registered Syrians, but only what the government calls illegal migrants, will be deported voluntarily to Syria. While Turkey had once been welcoming of Syrian refugees, the xenophobic, ultra-nationalist forces in the country have forced them to change their stance. There have been several incidents of violence against refugees recently. At the time of the initial influx of refugees from Syria, the right-wing president Recep Erdogan had publicly welcomed them into the country. In 2016, he had said that he would give most of them Turkish citizenship. 
However, in recent months, as a political movement has emerged in the country that blames refugees for job loss, wage cut and so-called Arabization of Turkey, he has shifted his position. Today, sensing the shifting political trends, Erdogan has expressed that he wants most of them to go back to Syria once the war is over. On July 29, hundreds of Costa Rican teachers once again took to the streets of San Jose and demonstrated outside the Legislative Assembly and later at the Democracy Plaza to reject a series of regressive reforms promoted by the government of President Carlos Alvarado. The mobilization was carried out as part of a week-long strike called for by the National Educational Workers Union, the Association of Secondary Education Teachers, from July 23 to July 29. The teachers as well as members of several social organizations and different sector trade unions mobilized against the anti-strike bill and the essential services bill that threaten the right to strike, freedom of association and dissolve trade unions. Since June 6, the teachers have also been protesting against the dual education bill, the pension reform bill and the bill of public employment law. The dual education bill calls on students that are older than 15 to do internships in private companies during the last years of their higher education in exchange for training, which the government claims would give them an early exposure to employment sector. However, the teachers association and various students unions criticize this reform and consider it as a threat to the future of higher education and dignified employment opportunities in Costa Rica. They said in a statement that they oppose this initiative because its purpose is to put Costa Rican education at the service of business chambers, create cheap labor and train obedient staff with a minimum of general or academic education without guaranteeing their constitutional or labor rights. This is all we have for you in this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.